called News Radio. I was trying to see if any of your friends from Camby made the headlines. Hold on. This is the news. You got a problem with the news now? <laughs> yeah. I got a big goddamn problem with the news. You ready for this? The news is completely manipulated. Everything you hear every single day is designed by corporate media to do one thing and one thing only. Jesus. To keep you living in fear. Oh, fear? Total fear. Fear so you'll go out and you'll spend money on things. Things you probably don't even need. Things you probably already have six of so that their advertisers will keep buying ads on their stations. I'll tell you one more thing. You ready for this? I'll do this all day, man. I got days of day not at home. You don't believe me? I'll keep hey, going. I'll drop a bomb on you bigger than hey. Nagasaki. What? What? Shut up. That's good. That's good. Boom shugalaka, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters around the world. It is your boy, Chris Shul, a.k.a. the esoteric noetic, a.k.a. The Chocolate Nubian Soul Brother. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, click on the bell. Tell your friends, tell your mom, drop some comments, let us know what it is. Let's get it. All right. Now, I want to talk about why I will not be taking the SARS 2.0. Boom shakalaka. Now, I'm going to avoid the science, scientism, because obviously I don't want YouTube censoring this video. But I'm just going to talk about my own personal convictions in regards to ethics and morality and you're probably thinking what does that have to do with like the vaccine it's vaccine's got nothing to do with ethics if you don't want to take it then don't take it you know no one's forcing you to take this thing well at the heart of this thing you'll realize that that is not true i keep hearing this over and over again that no one's forcing you to take something here's the thing when someone tells you that unless of course you do something they're going to restrict your ability to live so they're not going to allow you into buildings or they're going to tell businesses that you can't come into a particular area if it's a public area unless of course you have received a boom shakalucker or <clears throat> believe it or not they they have the balls to tell you and this is what's happening that you can't even leave your home unless of course you receive a boom shakalucker and that's where they're looking at bringing this thing. I mean, obviously they're already creating restrictions around being able to move out of the state, out of the country. This is the situation here in Australia, mate. And abroad you'll find that many governments are implementing very similar laws. And what a lot of people aren't aware of in, is that in Western Australia, there is already a law in the books. It's been around since 2016, where a police officer actually has the, I hate using the word legal, but yeah, it's the legal right at the moment to force you with reasonable force to, uh, to get boom shaka if, uh, if it's deemed that it's necessary. That's absolutely disgusting. Now, that very much there shows that yes, it is an issue about morals and principles. The idea that you get to force someone to do something just because you're scared is the very door gate to moral relativism, to all the tyrannical systems that we've seen. It's always been under this idea that it's for people's safety and it's ordered to uh, ensure that something bad doesn't happen. And this situation here is, is not different. So fundamentally, it does come down to ethics. It does come down to rights, morality. That's the number one reason. The other reason, though, just has to do with my own personal well-being. I mean, on a principled moral level, I mean, I am someone that does not eat anything that is born or anything that comes out of the things that are born. Some might call me vegan. And I try to avoid supporting organizations that, uh, that kill living beings in order to, uh, uh, well, to achieve their ends, you know? And uh, I know a lot of people are thinking, what does this have to do with the boom shakalaka? Well, the fact is that bovine fetuses and aborted human fetuses are ingredients that are often used in boom shakalakas. Yes, a lot of those aborted fetuses from Planned Parenthood, they often end up being sold to companies and they're used to make the boom shakalaka. Now, this is not, this is not a go against, you know, people that have abortions and this is, that's a whole other issue. However, if I don't want to support an organization that does that, that would be one reason. And being vegan, obviously, I don't want to support the fact that these animals are being killed in order to create these vaccines. Now, granted, in regards to the testing, often animals are, up, are, are tested in order to create these vaccines. Now, 
Granted, with the SARS 2.0, apparently from what I understand, they've skipped the animal testing, which is great for the animals. Animals obviously aren't having to face horrible uh, testing, essentially being, uh, being abused in order to, uh, to create something that works. However, maybe not so good for us, considering they've skipped the animal trials. Hmm? Yeah. And then, of course, another reason is I try not to take my medical advice from people that are trying to reduce the world's population. Now, I know it sounds conspiratorial, but um, it has been openly said uh, that, I mean, this is one of the ends, right? That, uh, and look, I, granted, a lot of people try to obfuscate the arguments of Bill Gates. I'm not going to do that. He has been quoted many times as saying that he's trying to uh, um, reduce the, this would, one of the benefits of uh, boom shakalaka is that it would reduce the population, but it was, wasn't within the context of him wanting to kill people. It's in the context of how if uh, these uh, parents from third world nations knew that uh, their, their kids were going to survive, they'd be more inclined to uh, have less, they'd essentially have less children. They wouldn't need to try to have so many children just hoping that one, of, one or two would survive. Now, because they have this amazing boom shakalaka that they know works, they could comfortably just have one shot. That's the logic of Bill Gates. That being said, the fact that, that there is an agenda, clearly, and look, I don't want to go too conspiratorial here, but you start thinking about interests. You start thinking about how, well, there's certain people that are profiting, and then, of course, these same people, it would be in their interest to actually have a reduction of the population. And uh, once again, if that is your ulterior motive, I'm inclined to think that you wouldn't be as, uh, as likely to have a massive issue if there was some kind of reduction in po the population from people taking certain boom shakalakas. And we only have to look at other, other situations where the implementation of boom shakalakas has gone astray and it has resulted in many people suffering adverse reactions and i'm not going to go through the history here i think you can you can do that on your own but if you look at the history around polio you have a look at the history around well most of the last few decades you will find that there have been many scenarios where uh, the reaction has not been what was expected in fact that is pretty much the history of science we often get results that we weren't looking for and sometimes they're not good but this idea that we should just trust the science look trust but verify if you believe that someone is giving you reliable information by all means it makes sense that you trust them but it's also incumbent upon you to do the research for yourself and try to figure out if it is legitimate don't just buy into something see one of the things that i do anytime i come across something that is controversial that runs against the narrative i do a tremendous amount of research the point where it is absolutely insane. That's why I will rarely speak to someone when I have a controversial viewpoint that runs against the narrative that doesn't at least learn something from my position because I find that people with all the humility I can muster are very ignorant in regards to facts around this entire issue and many other issues that are controversial because they tend to just buy into one narrative. I tend to have the ability where I can hold different viewpoints in my head and then try to refrain from judgment until I'm more conversant with the facts. And if you do this long enough on a particular issue, you will eventually arrive at a more fair assessment of what's going on. And I feel as if that isn't really been done, partly in launch to the tremendous censorship, but also partly because I think people just don't feel comfortable with knowing something that runs contrary to uh, what they initially Believed the law of first report. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, um, they're my reasons fundamentally why I will not be taking um, a boom shakalaka. And uh, I would love to know what your reasons are for taking them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you're feeling the message, be sure to check out the Telegram group. Check out the links below. Check out Pete. That's that uses the high blockchain, where I post all of these uh, related kind of content. Until next time, Surya Namaskara, Namaste. This is the Chocolate Nubian Soul Brother. Ow! <laughs>
What is liberty? What the? Who says you can't build <laughs> muscle on a vegan diet? What's it like being a, a hottie in the vegan community? <laughs> there are no political solutions, only technological ones. The economics of the system don't allow multiple competing systems to survive. Engineering, technology, these arts of humanity, they are magic.